Okay. All right. Gonna make some tea. Gonna wait for some folks to roll in, and then we're gonna have ourselves a Friday Q and A. Gonna fix my necklace that I thought I fixed. <laughs> that kind of stuff, you know. Um, yeah, it, it's been. I feel like it's been a pretty good week. I've got a little bit of sun. I'm just gonna be perpetually sunburnt looking throughout until it snows again. <laughs> just do I, I will get more freckles and inevitably people would be like, hey, you've got some dirt on your forehead or on your eyebrow or across your nose. And I'll be like, no, it's just the swath of freckles coming in. <laughs> a lot of them disappear. A lot of them disappear in the, um, in the winter time. You know, they go like more gentle, right? Um, but other ones don't. So... Today I'm just going to re-brew some tea that I made yesterday because she is too nice to waste. And when you make small pots like this, um, you can do far more than one infusion. And so I'm going to have um, this purple bud mealy leaf. I'll show you what they look like. In my pot, she's already been steeped once, so she's kind of opened up. Oh my gosh, she smells like, like honeydew. She's fantastic. But, um, get my hands to work. I can get my hands to work. But before I brew her, she looks like that. She is like the bud from tea plants, like Camellia sinensis, just before um, they open up into leaves, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, everybody rolling in. Um, let me get my water started. And then I'm going to retie this because it's a little tight. <laughs> it's like, what? You know, you tie it when you're standing up, but then you go to sit down and it's completely different. There. That's a little less constricting. Okay. So, hey. Hey, everybody rolling in. I am, like usual, today is um, the Friday Q&A, right? But we wait for me to have my tea first. Not all of it. Just for the tea to be ready, right? That gives me a chance to just kind of settle in and people to show up and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to jabber about things that have been going on because I know a lot of you um, miss, um, miss the tea times. I know. And I'm going to be honest, I miss them too. There are a lot of days that I'm like, oh, I could have talked about that on tea time, <laughs> right? Or things like that. But I know that it's good. It's good that I'm taking the break, you know, beyond like for finishing up the book, um, the I am of protocol. I am also like finding myself having time to like, like mornings. I'm taking care of myself a little better. I'm, I don't know. I, I, I think it's linked more to, it's not even about the lack of tea time so much it is I think after the after a decade of being everybody's herbalist now that I have help in the apothecary like I'm having people make things for me versus working my body into dust um I'm able to practice herbalism for myself <laughs> now it's weird because it's not like I haven't done that before but like um learning how like oh oh I don't have to bring in huge amounts of herbs I can just get this little tiny basket full and I'm fine right it's been um it's been a it's been a nice nice change and a nice shift and I think it was needed the same way that um oh my gosh my tea time my tea turned off I must have bumped it um the same way that um doing the tea time started a shift you know um, and so I think it's good. And I've been getting some stuff done in the garden, which is why I'm a little red. <laughs> you know, but we've been pushing, and I've got, finally yesterday, we got grapes in and the hops in. And we got the winter kiwis planted. All needed to be planted like a month ago. But it is what it is. And, pro tip, right now, at a garden section near you, all of their fruit trees and grape vines and all that kind of stuff is probably on sale if you watch, right? Because they know that planting season is kind of like irking to an end. But I've, I've purchased things like that in mid to late July and still gotten them to take root you know, well enough that you have that next year and you paid like, I think we ended up paying like $10 per like big mature grape plant versus the 40 or 50 they had it two weeks before, right? And so I was kind of just wait. I'm like, you can do it. You can wait. You can wait. You can wait, you know? Um, and so, uh, but yeah, you know, it has been, um, it has been good. I've been just doing lots of milk kefir stuff and milk stuff we're still deep into the milk season 
<laughs> the goats, you know. Um, and really, I've just been writing, you know, and spending time with my kids and, well, more, my daughter more so. My son, he's an adult, so he works all the time and just kind of, you know, easing into summer, really, I think is what it is. Um, but uh, what is the name of the infusion you have? Thanks for all you do. So this, if you mean the tea that I'm making today is, um, where did I put it? There she is. I'm making the Me Leaf Purple Bud. Uh, she, I really like purple teas. They're still a Camellia sinensis plant, just different region, different zone, different cultivar, but still the same plant. Um, and I really like her. She's very, um, you can get hints of like, like pine trees, but also like summertime melons and like a little bit of sweet cucumber. It really just depends on like which brew you're in. Right now, oh my gosh, it smells like candy to me. A uh, green watermelon rind. <laughs> right? Um, <clears throat> but like in the best way. I don't know if we can be friends if you don't eat your watermelon all the way down to the green and eat some of the crunchy green. <laughs> um, but yeah, I just, I really, really love her. Um, and she's so full of like all sorts of like fantastic, you know, like terpenes and just loaded with antioxidants and all that kind of stuff so um but yeah so now should have had that water boiling forever ago boop yeah i uh no the gadget i put oh this is a little guy one um technically uh, my daughter's not watching today she's at a movie with her aunt and her nephew and her grandma um but i will have the link for the little teapot in my um description when the video is done i always do like it if you like click on read more on the pinned comment underneath it'll take you to my amazon shop and i have all little teapots and things that i've gotten off of amazon listed there including dresses i wear and things like that you know because people always ask me and i'm like so i made a list <laughs> and if you call something home from it i get like 10 cents of the sale you know <laughs> I don't make, but it's okay you know but it is what it is um but yeah, so as soon as this timer gets done time in, we will um we will get the Q&A started. Um Sarah Walker says, "Hi April, I live in the UK and you were my inspiration to start dabbling with herbs. I wonder if you have any advice on how I can help my husband who has MS. There are no drugs here in the UK for him." Um I got tricked. I didn't know it was a question all the way. <laughs> um, and I'll jump in slightly because I, I don't want to leave you hanging or forget it. Um, I would really consider getting the book called Could It Be B12? <sighs> I'm not saying like a lot of people have MS and a lot of people have a severe vitamin B12 deficiency that's diagnosed as MS. Right, and they often, they seldom do not test for active B12 or any of that stuff. And a B12 deficiency, a lot of the symptoms, once it's really progressed, are like MS. Right, and so there's this book called Could It Be B12? Um, you can buy it used on Amazon. And you're in the UK, you could probably find it over there. There's also some Facebook um, B12 deficiency groups. There's one that's specifically based out of like Western Europe and part of the UK. And uh, they would be a great resource for you because a lot of the stuff they list of where they're getting, you know, like their shots at or this or that or testing will be more prevalent to like what you have access to than I have access to, you know. Um, so that's something to look into. Um, but yeah, I, um, but I, uh, I think that it's something that, um, I don't know. It's one of those things that I, I learned by my own illness where if you are really sick in some way and it's chronic, you should probably test your B12. <laughs> it's just one of those things right up there. Test your B12, test your vitamin A, test your vitamin K levels and test your vitamin C levels. You know, from there you could expand out but you would be surprised you'd be surprised but also we shouldn't be surprised because doctors pretty much all over the world especially in first world countries do not practice nutrition they practice medicine and so they're not looking for root causes they're looking to write you a prescription to help symptoms maybe go away if not or tell you there's nothing that they can do but remember just because they say that there's nothing that they can do doesn't mean that there's nothing that you can do right you know it's just something to consider um but but yeah i uh um 
I'm ready for some tea. <laughs> um, oh my gosh. She smells so amazing. She's definitely like up there in my top favorites. Like the purple bud is just fantastic. Um, and I kind of treat her like a special treat sometimes. Okay, here, here comes the questions. All right, so somebody said, what can you eat watermelon rind fresh? Uh, I was always told not to, supposed to help. Uh, oh my goodness, I ran up there. I was always told not to unless pickled, which is icky. No, you can eat watermelon rind fresh. I wouldn't eat the outer part just because it'd be hard to chew on, but the inner white part after you eat the red down, yeah, put some salt on it and just like crunch it a little bit. <laughs> it's fantastic, yeah. Um, it hasn't killed me yet, and I'm like a notorious watermelon eater. Also, if you ever, like, if I'm ever around and you're like somebody cut open the watermelon, and suddenly there's no centerpiece. I ate it and ran. <laughs> um, okay, so um, if you have a question, it's best to say question and then throw the question at me. Question, I carry 30 pounds of scar tissue adhesions in my abdomen. What would you do if you had them? Doctors just want to do surgery, which causes more scar tissue. Right. So I would make a really strong calendula-infused castor oil. And I would start doing castor oil packs like twice a day with that calendula-infused castor oil. Castor oil is amazing at breaking down scar tissue. And when you combine her with calendula, who is way overlooked for her ability to reduce scarring and scar tissue and things like that I bet you'll see a reduction it'll take time it'll take consistency but it's something to consider trying and if you decide to go through with the surgery to have some of the scar tissue removed afterwards make sure once your incision is healed and such that you start using that same castor oil pack to prevent the tissue from building back up um, question what would you do for a cortisol belly well the answer to that is lowering the cortisol. Um, you really, really do have to lower the cortisol or your body won't let go of that fat, right? It's just, it's just unfortunately a part of it. I really like using chamomile tea on a regular basis, but getting a spit-based cortisol test to see how bad your cortisol is would give you a better idea of how severe of a plan you need to make, right? And I guess severe wasn't, maybe complex is a better word than severe, right? Um, if I saw that my cortisol rhythm was completely flipped where it's low in the morning and high at night, I would consider looking into ciproheptadine. It's an old school allergy medication. It's a medicine, it's not an herb, but really tiny amounts, like a four milligram thing cut into pieces of four. That's what I personally used. Um, in about two to three months of like microdosing a, an old school antihistamine, my cortisol levels had regulated. Now, of course, you can do things like grounding, getting sun in your eyes, spending time near the water. It just depends on how severe it is, right? But also what's really interesting, I'm seeing um, as I dive into like the El Ruderai yogurt making scene and studies because the scene is always like really hostile which is funny because it's supposed to increase your dopamine <laughs> but they all kind of seem like assholes but um um I'm seeing that like it's allowing like weight to come off the midriff pretty easily and that makes sense because the L. ruteri bacteria triggers your parasympathetic nervous system which by proxy lowers your cortisol right so they're like oh it helps you lose weight I'm like it probably does but by the mechanism of increasing your gut health and also uh lowering your cortisol because you have to lower that cortisol there's no other answer to it right um okay question could you talk about alternative healthier uh, alternatives to shampoo and deodorant what do you use i use hot water uh, about once a year i'll use some castile soap unscented right but i have 25 years worth of uh dreadlock growth like drag on the ground when i take them down so my hair care would be a little bit different than your hair care but i don't use soap I don't have split ends, I don't have oily hair, any of that type of stuff. I would do a deep dive into YouTube on like people who do like old school hair care techniques. Like what women did before they could go buy a random fucking bottle of herbal essence, right? Like women weren't filthy back then, they were smarter. They knew how to tend to their hair and a lot of them never ever used shampoo and they didn't even have to wash their hair all that often. So look into like the historical videos of how women were taking care of their hair. There are a lot of women recreating this and like showing you how it works and showing you what it's doing to their hair. And I watch those videos all the time even though it doesn't apply to me because I can't use any other methods 
<laughs> I just find them relaxing. I like them, you know, um, and they're really interesting stuff. And as far as deodorant goes, you could use like a magnesium spray. I sell a pit goop, so I'm biased, um, but it doesn't have any nasty chemicals in it or any fragrances or anything like that. But sometimes when our armpits stink really bad, it's because we have high cortisol levels, hormone imbalance, food intolerance, things like that. Um, so starting to like knock some of that stuff back to see if, you know, like check it off the box, see if that was the issue and check your magnesium levels. Low magnesium is like, top reason that we stink really bad especially like because magnesium also helps regulate cortisol right okay so let me jump down here question is it okay to put tinctures into my very hot water as a sort of tea or just two ounces to reduce the alcohol um you can put it into what i would say drinkable tea like when i first poured this in there it might have been too hot for it but putting it into there once it's like tea level warm or you're like okay i'm gonna have some of this is fine if you are wanting to evaporate it off do the same thing the minuscule amount of alcohol but I'll let it sit for three minutes you know, but it, I mean, honestly, there's in a tincture that's made with 100 proof vodka, there's literally more alcohol present in a ripe banana than in your tincture dose. Like, think about this. If 100 proof vodka is 50% water and 50% alcohol, that means one single drop of tincture is only half a drop of alcohol, <laughs> right? Because it's half water, right? So even if you took 10 drops, it's only five drops of alcohol right? There's probably more in your mouthwash or anything like that, you know, so it's something to consider. Um, question, is there any valid brain validity, 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 <laughs> is there any validity, uh, in rebounding? If so, what are your thoughts for someone beginning? Yeah, for sure. I mean, it's just basic, like when we stimulate, when we move, we stimulate our lymphatic functions. Um, I do it off and on. It can help with energy. I also really like for, um, building muscle, like in your thighs and your legs and helping your, like your feet get used to like moving more than just like perfect flat reality. Right. Um, so usually the, the biggest obstacle to rebounding is the cost of the trampoline, <laughs> right? Because you need a trampoline. And I've seen too many horror stories where people try to buy a cheap kid's trampoline and then they like break their fucking ankle the first time they jump on it. Cause they just ripped through, you know? And so like, um, it just starts slow. It's usually, it's something crazy. Like it's something crazy. Like 10 minutes of rebounding is the same as like 30 minutes of cardiovascular. Right. So it's way more impactful. I also like to combine it with like, um, like dry brushing or anything. And I usually would do that first and then I would rebound, right? Or, I mean, I guess you could do it the other way around. I like it with red light therapy and all that stuff, but it's definitely valid. Um, so do you create your own tea? If not, can you tell me what you are doing? I scrolled onto this and I'm interested now. I do create a lot of my own teas, but unfortunately where I live, I can't grow Camellia sinensis, which is the type of tea that we all know as green tea, or black tea, or white tea, or oolong tea. Camellia sinensis is an amazing plant. She can be thousands of different things, even though she's the same thing. It depends. It, she has such a relationship built with humans that it's amazing how, depending on the soil and, and the temperature and the shade or the sun or the moisture in the air, how she's cured, how she's fermented, how she's treated, when she's picked, how old she is, all of that impacts her chemical compounds to the point where you think that you are working with a different plant, but you're really not. And she's just such an amazing plant, but I can't grow her where I live because it's too hot in the summer and then too cold in the winter. But I definitely look any, um, advise anybody look into like really high quality green tea or white tea. This is a purple bud tea. Um, thank you so much for the super Kylia Lewis. Um, but yeah, so question, um, best way to use sterile comfort internally, I have blocking for variety. Um, typically I would just make an infusion and I don't like to drink her for more than like two days in a week right? But you could spread it out. You could be like, okay, well, I'm going to have a cup of comfrey infusion like on Monday, but then on Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to have like nettle or red clover. And then on the next day, I'm going to have comfrey, right? And then you could maybe irk in maybe more than that if you're like switching through, right? But like comfrey is a really good ally, but 
uh, the cultivated varieties that are sterile, that are like hybrid, they don't have as much alkaloids as the wild varieties, but they do have alkaloids, right? And the alkaloids will be lower after she has bloomed. Now you can cut that back and she'll bloom again, but she's still low, right? Um, and so usually you want to wait until after they've bloomed until you start ingesting. Um, but okay. So question, how do you use small amounts of herbs to make tinctures, infusions, etc.? I have small container yields and not sure how they'd measure out for the tincture so um you don't really if you're using fresh if you're using fresh herbs you don't have to do all that math if you're using fresh herbs you don't have to pretend like you're using um fresh herbs <laughs> so when people start working with dried plant matter and you see all the one-to-one -one ratios and the weighing of this and the adding the water afterwards Literally, that's all to mimic using fresh plants. They're trying to get it back to a 50% ratio. They're trying to make sure that there's a small enough in there of dried that that would be that amount when it was fresh. Seriously, this is a small jar. You could even get a smaller jar. All you have to do is fill it up with your fresh plant, put alcohol over top. 100 proof is best, 100 proof vodka, but most people can only get 80 proof. That's fine. Let it sit a few weeks longer. It is so not that complicated. When it comes to infusions it's usually one ounce per quart jar right so if you're like well i only have a pint jar divide that by two then it's half an ounce if i only have a like a half pint divide that by four and it's like one fourth right like it's not super complex it really isn't people will try to tell you it is but it's not um can i spell the name of the allergy medication you mentioned for lowering cortisol Let's see if my dysgraphic ass can do that. I'm going to bring a spelling bee. Ciproheptadine. I can't even say it. I wish that I could. Like, you know what I don't like on here is um, I can't type on the screen. It's so weird to me because on like, um, on like Instagram I can. So Cipro, C-Y-P-R-O, Heptadine, H-E-P-T-I-D-I-N-E, -I, -I, -E, I believe. <laughs> If my husband is moderating, and he is, he can copy and paste it into there. Um, but I'm pretty sure I spelled it right. Uh, so question, how can I heal from rosacea? Thank you for your knowledge. Um, rosacea is typically, okay, there's a debate about rosacea. Some people believe that it is just like a skin condition, like eczema. But other people believe that it's an infection, bacterial in nature. You know, um... I kind of fall on the fence that it could be both, but it's like more likely to be bacterial in my opinion, and here's why. Because people will take a course of antibiotics for something unrelated, and their uh, rosacea goes away, right? Thank you for the super Cody Austin. And their, uh, their rosacea goes away while they're on antibiotics, and then when they stop taking it, it comes back right and even though they say rosacea isn't um contagious if you look at the instant instances of rosacea in similar households especially family member households versus just like roommates a lot of people will have rosacea and then they're like oh it's genetic i'm like that or the people we live with especially from youth and up we share a lot of bacteria with right and so we would be prone to the same things um in either case no matter what you think it is or what it's caused from I really like burdock root internally for this, um, and I also like yarrow and burdock, uh, like leaf or root, topically, right? Burdock really helps get the liver up and going. She's known as like a blood cleanser, right? And so topically, but she works best topically and internally at the same time, right? Because you want to be working on both fronts. You want to help your liver have the capacity to flush out the bacteria, but you also want to work with the bacteria topically. And for a long time, and I... I have helped making things now, so I don't have as many things in the shop, but I made um, a yarrow and a burdock root slash leaf infused oil for rosacea, and people were like, this is the only thing that takes away my rosacea. I'm like, well, you're just killing the bacteria, right? But you can make that on your own so easy. Um, okay, question. How do you slow down estrogen in children? My daughter had CPP. She's 11. Well, start looking at her diet. Um, start looking at what's in your food. There's soy leaching in everything, right? Um, but also the rancid seed oils. Look to your environment and what is going in her body that is creating an estrogen storm. And that includes the goddamn essential oils, 
And I say goddamn because they're horrible. They're really bad. They are hurting people. They are increasing estrogen. They are hurting children. They are just destroying people, right? And so, but we think they're healthy and an alternative and easy way to work with plants. But really, they're the most volatile compound of a plant. And if you don't feel comfortable working with the plant as a whole, you have no business working with the most volatile compounds. Right. Um, but no, I would, that's what I would really do. I would start looking at that, but also she could start drinking chamomile tea on a regular basis. It's shown to lower estrogen levels and open up the detox pathways through your liver and chamomile is super safe. Right. She's a super safe herb that unless you're allergic to daisies, like something in the Astor family, anybody can have chamomile. Um, question, wild yam and birth control pill. Been on 33 years for endo. No, they would just oppose each other, right? Um, and so, like, it, the birth control is, like, chronically jacking up your estrogen levels, right? Um, and so it's really, really hard to then try to take an herb to balance things because you'll always be taking something that's opposing it. Um, and it is hard. It is hard to come off of stuff like that. There are whole support groups of women trying to recover from birth control. So definitely do some research. Find a group, something that someone that you can talk about, about like the process of like coming off of like long term birth control use and see. Um, and then you can kind of like go down the road of like dealing with like the estrogen dominance, right? Which is what caused the endo in the first place. Um, Kimberly Rogers says, You are so beautiful. Thank you so much. Question I am B12 deficient and do all the things to help myself. I had a tooth extraction and bone graft yesterday with 45 minutes of anesthesia. Liquid mush diet for two weeks and soft food for four months. No meat. Help. So when you went under anesthesia, as I'm sure she knows, but to share with other people, anesthesia knocks the B12 out of your body. <laughs> knocks it out of your cells. Fucks you up. Like, people are doing whippets and getting anesthesia and all this crazy stuff that have no B12 in their body. Um, and if you're not eating meat um, because it's a personal choice, I would help. I would hope that you would, like, challenge that um if you're making smoothies what you could do if it's just because you feel like you can't shoot you can't eat meat because it's a liquid diet consider getting raw liver and putting small amounts into your smoothie you won't taste it but you'll be getting some you know b12 in your body but also uh if you're that deficient look into getting b12 shots now in the u.s you're not like you can't just go buy it over the counter but from fact in places like you know austria germany uh, there, most places in the EU, you can just buy B12 shots. And if you already know that you need B12, I would consider joining a B12 support group and see how people are talking about giving themselves and buying themselves their own B12 shots. You know, you can learn about all the cofactors and things that are important to go alongside of it, you know, like potassium and iron and things like that. Uh, okay, so question. Most natural birth control, I need my copper spiral removed because it's old rhythm method <laughs> and I know but outside of that having yourself a good Queen Anne's lace tincture and Queen Anne's lace seed which has been shown to help stop like the implantation of the embryo but like really tracking your cycle and being like you don't get to touch me in your ovulation which can be hard because like our body's like yeah I'm ovulating and you look nice <laughs> Right, you know, but having that Queen Anne's lace on hand is handy for just preventing the pregnancy, but it's not foolproof. So if you are somebody where like getting pregnant would like endanger you or like you didn't have access to choose to not be pregnant or like anything like that, I wouldn't necessarily rely on Queen Anne's lace. You know, uh, okay, so question, how to help teenager with acne, yarrow tincture? Uh or make my yarrow spritz. So this is just fresh yarrow with 100 proof vodka over top. And uh, my kids use it like crazy. But the, my daughter's always like, my acne is so bad. I'm like, you have like two. <laughs> because, you know, she doesn't have bad acne. But that's because for a long time she's always used yarrow tincture and yarrow infused oil and yarrow infused witch hazel on her face. You can use dried yarrow to make the witch hazel spritz, which I show you how to do. There's a video, you can go check it out. Uh, it's probably on my like infusions playlist or like in the apothecary or something like that. Uh, you can just scroll through. It's not been maybe a couple months since I posted it. Um, question, I just made some lemon balm tincture and used leaf and stem. Is that okay? Perfectly fine, all above parts. I don't know why, I don't know why herbalists do that. They're like, oh, I'm going to make a lemon balm tincture or a catnip tincture or whatever. And they're like, I'm just going to pick the leaves off and not use the stems. I'm like, well, the stems are transporting <laughs> the 
the properties we're after, right? The stem is what is putting the properties into the plant and giving her all of her nutrients. And so it's kind of like you're throwing away the stomach of the plant and just using her arms, right? Like, and so you can use, unless there's a specific reason for a very specific plant, just use all above ground parts, right? Most of the time you don't really want to use the root or there's different methods for using the root, but like stems, leaves, blooms, it's all fine, especially in the mint family. Um, but yeah, so I just, <clears throat> yeah, it's really not that complicated. People just overcomplicate things. And I can't blame them because most people learn like A, B, C, D, all the way to Z. That's the steps they learn to do something. And then because they're learning in that manner, they get fucking shook when someone's like, hey, like M through fucking Y is like useless. Throw it out. <laughs> you can just do this and you don't have to overcomplicate it and you can just practice skip thinking and things like that, you know? Um, but people are like, no, no. And I'm like, no, nah, it just, just because you're regurgitating something that somebody taught to you doesn't mean that you can't change it or that it's not inaccurate. Right. Um, question, uh, where did it go? Um, oh, so with fresh lemon balm, you would use a hundred proof vodka and no water. Correct. When you aren't using dried plant matter, you don't have to do any water math. There's no percentage math or anything like that. It's just vodka and plants. Boom. It's that easy. Seriously, I can show somebody how to make a tincture in like a minute. It's just like put the plant in the jar, put alcohol over top, let it sit for like four to six weeks. Ta-da, you made a tincture. <laughs> it really is that simple. Um, okay, so question, what herbs to get rid of clogged arteries? There are a couple things. Um, first of all, what's clogging your arteries? If it is calcium related plaque, if it's calcium buildup, right? If they're like, oh my God, you've been calcified, right? That's scary in your heart. People die from it. You are vitamin K deficient. Straight up, you need vitamin K1 and vitamin K2. And there are plenty of studies you can go read on PubMed about vitamin K1 and vitamin K2 reversing plaque buildup in arteries and hearts and stopping people from dying. If it's not calcium based buildup. Um, you could start working with things like hawthorn berry, shiitake mushroom. Those are my two favorites. I really like them for that type of stuff. But also here's something interesting to think and my brain is just in this mode because I've been working on my IMF protocol book. So when you go out into the sun, your skin has this unique compound in it that instantly turns your cholesterol into vitamin D. I mean, instantly. It starts happening right away. But we eat tons of cholesterol and we've been convinced to be mole people <laughs> and terrified of the sun and constantly putting on sunblock and staying out of there and just constantly hiding from the sun. Well, the cholesterol can't be turned into the vitamin D you need. And ironically, which vitamin D is a hormone, but when you get low on vitamin D, uh, you start having like cardiovascular issues, but then you start having cholesterol buildup, which leads to plaque buildup and more inflammation. So your cholesterol gets worse and worse and worse because you haven't been out in the sun in a while. <laughs> right, you know, but if you could start being out in the sun in the morning, right when you wake up, and then come back in and then back out in the afternoon and then come back in and then back out in the evening, it would, it would make probably a pretty big difference in your cholesterol levels and by proxy your artery health. You know, it's crazy. Like if we disconnect our body from the earth that provides for us, it's almost like we get sick. Uh, okay. So let me do one more question. Um, and uh, so somebody said, my husband gave me a B12 injection before he unloaded me from the wheelchair post-surgery. The nurse looked at him like he had three heads. Good. Keep on top of those injections. And consider um, adding, like, little pieces of raw uh, liver to your smoothie, things like that. You know, just so you can get a lot of the cofactors. You'll need that heme iron to process um, the B12 anyhow. Um, question. My husband and kids are not a fan of tooth powder. Can I just add water to yours to make it the same consistency as regular toothpaste? It'd be a little tricky. It would just turn into, like, a mud. Because <laughs> you could, um... You could try experimenting by adding like a little bit of coconut oil and then a little bit of glycerin and mixing it together. That might be closer, but it won't foam because there's no chemical foaming agents in it, you know. Um, but uh, 
you know, sometimes people just need time to break away from old habits like surfacants and foaming agents and fluoride, you know, it can be hard, but I do have different flavors out now. I actually just got, um, my mint mouth mud finished up and my charcoal mouth mud. The mint one might, might make them feel more familiar because it has a slight mint flavor to it, but it won't be the punch in the face <laughs> that most, um, toothpastes are because I don't use essential oils. It's actually real mint that's powdered inside of it. And it gives like a really nice, pleasant, just low key mint with a little bit of the like cool sensation but not a whole lot right that might be an easier switch for them um but uh so i don't have a partner yet but i want to get my body ready and i've been having a really rough periods last year when we bleed really heavy it's typically a sign of um, malnutrition to some degree right it can be a hormone irregularities but like one thing I'm really finding over the past two years is like a lot of the women who have like really heavy periods, really bad periods are really deficient in vitamin Ks. I know I sound like a, bro a broken record all the time, but these things are important and every body is the same, right? Like your body needs vitamin K regardless of what you know or don't know. And if we don't know this and we're not getting, even if the crazy thing is, is even if even if you're eating animal fats, which is where K2 comes from, or even if you're eating leafy greens, which is where K1 comes from, with leafy greens, even if your liver is at peak performance, you only convert 10% of the vitamin K in greens into vitamin K2, right? You need that conversion to happen. K1 isn't necessarily bioavailable. Actually, they're kind of considered different vitamins, even though they're one and the same. Uh, they, they convert into it. And K2 comes from like animal fats, but like unless you're eating like high-end grass-fed animal fats, there's no more K2 in there because they didn't get grass to turn the K1 into the K2 for you. <laughs> so it's something to look into getting all the rancid seed oils, the PUFAs, the polyunsaturated fatty acids out of your diet. Now, I mean like man-made type. I am not afraid of naturally occurring PUFAs like some people take it pretty far. Um, thank you so much for the super CJD. Um, can you, uh, somebody said, um, hello, beautiful April love. Can you reverse anemia? If you're talking about iron based anemia, yeah, I would look in to the root cause protocol. Typically Morley's work is all about getting you to understand that you need copper to shuttle iron into your cells. And so most of the time, because there's fortified iron in all of our food, if you're eating processed food at all, uh, what's happening is you actually have an overload of iron and then that overload of iron depleted your copper levels. And then because you don't have any copper, you can't shuttle iron into your blood serum. So then they're like, you're anemic, you need iron. But like, it just keeps getting worse and worse and worse. So if you're somebody where like supplementing iron genuinely isn't working to help with your anemia and you eat all the meat and you do all the things you probably have a copper deficiency and it would be worth looking into you could get a htma hair test um, your doctor won't be able to do that for you unless he's a functional medicine doctor but you can order these kits online i even see them on amazon these days um, but also one area that i think think morally misses a little bit even though he has people start taking camu camu for some vitamin c is that like you really need vitamin c to uptake iron so if you get a copper test and it says your copper's fine i don't want you to feel defeated i want you to test your vitamin c right because without that vitamin c you cannot uptake the iron that you're taking in so it's something to consider so anyhow um, it's been about 30 minutes, so I'm going to hop off of here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. If you'd like to support my capacity to teach freely, be a human, keep a roof over my head and tea in my pot, consider becoming a member to my channel. It's just a way to throw me a couple bucks a month. You do get early access to videos. Excuse me. I have like at least three or four out right now for members only. Um, and then I've got another one I'm uploading today about dealing with like um, histamines and showing one of my favorite herbal blends to make at home for yourself um, for histamine tolerance and allergies and things like that. Um, if you can't afford to become a member, don't even worry about it because it's not a paywall. It's a little bitty time wall, meaning every weekend I throw out a new video anyways. It gets released to everybody to watch it. So even if you can't afford, you'll be able to see the video eventually. Um, so if you can't do that, or even if you can, liking, commenting, subscribing, sharing, buying supers like Daphne half like 
Daphne Heffer did. Thank <laughs> you. I hope I said that right. That's a little bit of a tongue twister. Um, all really supports my capacity to teach freely. Sharing is really important because it helps other people realize that they are capable and smart enough of taking their health back into their own hands. It gets people curious. It gets my work out there. And that's really helpful. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see everybody next Friday. Bye.